Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm bringing you an interview with a glass artist who's really at the beginning of her stained glass career. She's been working with glass, fused glass and stained glass for about five years. I think it's really nice to talk to artists at the early stages as well, just to give you an idea of what can be achieved with the great variety of glass applications that we have. So I'm talking with a glass artist by the name of Janine Greenberg uh, and I first was introduced to Janine through the Worshipful Company of Glaziers awards scheme which awards uh, grants to up-and-coming artists to visit established studios and learn from other glass artists and so uh, Janine chose to come to work with me for a week's work and it was a delight to work with her and we've kept in contact ever since. So I felt it was important to bring an interview to you today showing you her work and the type of work that she's involved with which is fused glass as well as stained glass and jewellery making. It's really different to the maybe larger scale artists who do uh, shopping centres or uh, museums and airports terminals. Stained glass can accommodate all types of artists and all types of expressions. So um, if you're new to the channel, I make inspirational videos and tutorials on all types of stained glass from designing through to painting through to making stained glass windows and I would encourage you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Um, I produce content on a very regular basis and I'm interested in developing a community of artists and creatives who have an interest and passion for glass. So please hit that subscribe button and join our community. I will also leave links in the description below to Janine's artwork so please check that out and I will leave links in the description to the Worshipful Company of Glaziers who provide grants and bursaries for up-and-coming artists. They are a great organization helping and supporting the craft of stained glass and I thoroughly encourage you to check them out. I'm a liveryman with the company, I'm also a past judge for the Stevens competition and it is something that I'm keen to promote to the widest possible audience so please check them out. Uh, please leave comments and suggestions for future artists whom you'd like me to interview. So without any further ado, sit back, relax and enjoy. Hello Janine, how are you? Hi Derek, welcome and thank you. I'm really glad you invited me to speak today and I'm looking forward to this. Fantastic. So where are you? Where are you speaking from today? I'm speaking from uh, my office come studio at home. Um, so I've got a few bits around me that uh, inspire me. Fantastic. And is this, is this where you do most of your work, where you mo do most of your designing and making? Well, yes and no. It's uh, because of COVID, we are all in my, uh, the house, my two uh, adult children. So each of us are designated our spaces so we can give ourselves privacy. So it's worked really well because we have a common area that's a making area for both myself and my son. So that's worked really well. So this is my private little cave. This is your woman. This is your woman cave. Oh, I don't know about that, but it's my cave. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think we all need our caves, especially if you're a creative. You need to be able to go to your own space, and kind of like clear your head and not think about, you know, the shopping or the washing or all the other stuff that we all have to do every day. You have to sort of have a space that you can just kind of get your head into the right, the right kind of frame of mind. Yeah. No, it, absolutely. And it's really, I mean, I can look out and obviously the sky and the trees and everything's there. So I like the connection to nature. So let's let's start at the beginning. How did you get involved in your creative journey? Um, I know you do a lot of creative work besides glass and we'll touch on those as we go through our conversation. But how did you begin your journey? Okay, so initially I, uh, I started off in jewellery design and doing enamel on copper and I absolutely adored it. And so it's, it's similar to the processes of using frit. So that inspired me and I started, I had a tiny kiln and started making my pieces. I, I loved making panels. So I then started making bigger panels and because I had a small kiln, I had to come up with a method of doing that. And so I started making my little panels looking like stained glass panels where the, it was like a puzzle, all the pieces fitted together. And that really, I started really looking in that and I thought, okay, I'm gonna try, what happens if I start working bigger and 
I can work bigger in metal, but it really interested me in what the glass does and the melting and the layering when you put different colors on the copper or on one layer of glass on the other. So I initially started doing um, evening classes at uh, Kensington and Chelsea College. And that just, I, I was there for a year and a half to two years and I decided I want to take it further so I did in 2017 did a BTEC in level three in glass and fusing but my skills in glass painting on the enamel were always are uh, you know they are transportable and can be used on glass so it was just extending that and taking it further so I completed my BTEC and that's kind of where my journey um, has begun. So I haven't been long in glass. It's about four years, four or five years, but it's it's amazing. Well, I was first introduced you, to you through the Stevens competition. Um, I was a judge and your, your entry came up and it was one of the most compelling entries uh, of that particular year. So talk us through a little bit about your association with the Stevens competition. The, that brief that year was to design uh, the windows at the RAC um, for the men's toilet. So that <laughs> that kind of kind of got me going and kind of irked me a little bit as well <laughs> because I thought no one's ever going to see those other than men and few men who go to that toilet in the whole building. So I was intrigued and slightly irked, but that actually got me inspired to actually create something and and I did that and I really enjoyed that um but there were like hidden things like my rebellion against the competition that I put into <laughs> into the piece that kind of made me you know I just I, I chuckled at that <laughs> which is hidden in the pieces I was I was very taken with the amount of work that you put into the, into your application those drawings are absolutely fantastic really large detailed drawings so much work went into it and then the sample panel as well which is a section of the full design was so beautifully made and so interestingly made with lots of different techniques at place. The piece was done in applique work because there were lots of little pieces and fragments and it was like almost working from the background to the foreground and the fused pieces in the background were actually um, UV glued onto the piece as well. Just how the light played through the different colours. I used amazing colours. Uh, I love using colour in my work so that was quite important. Fabulous. Well, it was, I mean, technically it was a tour de force. It, 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 it's always amazing as, as, as a judge, you kind of look at the entries and technically they're often absolutely brilliant. And they're from students and people at the beginning of the career who are just starting out and already they're master, mastering techniques, which are really quite advanced. So your piece was certainly a very advanced piece and it was, uh, it was celebrated uh, rightly as a consequence. So as well as doing fusing work and doing architectural work, I know you do a lot of other work, a lot of creative output in other areas. So can you tell us a little bit about the other types of creative work that you do? I have seen over the years how having a creative practice has enhanced someone's life, has helped them through many difficulties. And that really interests me in terms of my creative practice. Um, I also, I always am dabbling in something creative through lockdown. I made Salto jewelry, which I'm busy putting all the pieces together. Um, I have also worked on, because I have a painting practice myself, I illustrated, and this is a project that's going to extend through different medium, through the glass, through jewellery. Um, I have illustrated The Little Mermaid. Now, storytelling also plays an important part in my work. And not, I'm not looking at The Little Mermaid in terms of Disney, but looking at the original story and also the intention behind fairy tales. So um, it's, it's pretty exciting. I'm looking forward to exploring it more and um, just, you know, continuing that practice. It's really interesting because looking at your work, I can see there's a lot of allegorical art and a lot of storytelling. And there's sometimes there's quite a dark side to fairy tales as well, isn't there? It's not it's not all just Disneyfication and, and sunshine and light. Well, that's what appeals to me. 
<laughs> so talk us through talk us through a little bit about some of the things about fairy tales which appeal to you that may not be um, immediately apparent to people who when they think of the term fairy tales so when one's thinking of fairy tales there's often a, a deeper story to it and a moral story and sometimes okay that can be questionable but they they're in a sense looking at issues that people wouldn't talk about like sexuality or how you treat people or choices that you make in your life and it's put in a way that seems you know very sweet and sometimes not so sweet there's often death but Often when we go through personal transformation, there is a death and a loss of something to get to the next point and coming through that to another side. And, and fairy tales illustrate this sometimes in a very literal way. But if you start looking through it, there's a loss of something or the underdog or the person that you're not really looking at or who seems the fool turns out to be the hero in the end. For the audience, it would be really interesting to hear your perhaps three personal favourites, maybe projects that you've carried out in the last five years, which you feel broke new ground for you or expressed in a more complete way or in a satisfactory way what you felt that you wanted to say about the allegorical storytelling. Uh, what projects do you find um, are most pleasing for you? With my fusing, um, I did a series of bowls um, and I still make fused bowls. There is an interest in that for me as a container. So that can contain dreams. It can I have a fascination with nature and water. Water, that's my happy place going to the sea. So I did a series on bowls and I had gone on a pilgrimage across northern Spain. And in all the churches, obviously you have... Uh, where they do confirmations, where they do baptisms. And these containers and bowls were really, really interesting. There is uh, my stained glass panels that I have made, um, which are objects that can go on tables where the light is contained and in a sense transportable. And these are to do with uh, my faith and research into uh, say female mystics or magic I'm really really interested in that and I know sometimes they represent in a sense are similar to ch church stained glass windows but for me that is something incredible and beautiful because it is when you do go into a church the magic of the light coming through does transcend and transport you to another place and I can imagine in the middle ages where life was you know maybe perhaps tough and you go into a church that sense of otherworldly walking into there and that's what I'm trying to do in those panels my um my spiritual work in those panels to kind of uplift transcend but also that because they are placed on a table when light is not showing through it it's also important that the face of the work um tells a story without the light and something else is told when light starts coming through be it daylight or a lamp going on in the room that something else is visible and something else is seen and when I was creating um one of the pieces I didn't realize I was painting on slightly opaque green glass I had painted this gorgeous angel in white which when the light is off it's like oh wow that's amazing and when you put the light on it she totally disappears but something else comes forward in the piece and and I really loved that and enjoyed that and I think that's what's wonderful about working with glass is that it's a living medium, isn't it? And it and it, it, it reacts to available light. And if it's sunlight or or images behind, et cetera, they sort of create surprising effects that you can't always um, plan for. And that's what's I think that's one of the great charms of working with glass is that it has this sort of characteristic that is quite unpredictable sometimes. And, and to, on that subject as well, the alchemy, when you, you're busy painting and you have an idea in your head, you put it in the kill, something happens in there that you cannot control, even no matter how much I think experience you may have, there are still the unexpected things that happen. Um, and that, that is where the transformation and the magic also happens. My third piece that I, I and this is part of the project that I'm working now, on now, is The Little Mermaid. And I have constructed one. It's a sculpture which was a nightmare in a sense and still is a nightmare. 
<laughs> in that it is quite a big structure. It's made of sheets, small sheets, um, but they UV glue together. So there is this fragility about the whole piece. Um, but the idea of it being transparent, that you can move around the piece, that it looks like a building, um, which harks back to my architectural training. Um, I'm really loving uh, kind of what it is saying and where where it's going. Um, some of the other pieces that I'm going to be doing and the piece behind me is just a sketch that I'm busy working on. It's going to be more for the wall, but also looking at breaking it up when the light, looking at how light passes through it, what happens on the surface reflected back to the person. Um, it's a mirror, uh, it will be including reflective surfaces in it. So, so it's just, it's, it's a challenge. I like materials um, <laughs> and playing with them. Now, um, as part of the recognition from the Stevens competition, you won an award to visit a variety of studios, including uh, Mark Angus, and you actually came to my studio and I had the great pleasure of working with you for a week. Um, and I was so impressed with your output of work. You're, you're very fast, but you're also very detailed. Uh, I would disappear off to do something and come back a couple of le hours later and you would have created the most incredibly intricate work. And I think you were sort of developing the concept of the mermaid sculpture that you were talking about a moment ago um, with me. And I could see you working with different layers and it was just really exciting to see how your mind was working, how you were creating this sort of three-dimensional structure that could be read in the round as it were um so it was it was really lovely to see that and it's it was a very detailed piece so you're expanding that now and you're developing that into is it a, is it going to be a series of pieces or is this just a, going to be a one-off it's going to be a series of pieces but it's also going to link to um my uh the drawings that I've done and also again that it is very fluid a bit like glass um, in that as I'm going along I am having to rethink some of the pieces rethink what I'm doing rethink the illustrations because I don't want it just to be a representation of the story I want to try work into it that hidden side um, in the story um, and that's what I'm busy trying to figure out, uh, kind of, you know, how, how to actually do that. Um, and that's my challenge. But I think the fact that you're working in a variety of mediums, you're working with glass, you're working with paint, you're making jewellery, you're making three-dimensional sculptures. I think mentally that's wonderful because it allows you to kind of compartmentalise ideas and also cross pull cross-pollinate ideas so maybe something that you're working on in painting can inform what you're doing in glass and vice versa I think it's fantastic to have a um, a broad vista to, to work from and although you say you're very focused and very detailed and yet that can be too detailed I think the fact that you're dealing with lots of different materials at the same time is is fantastic because that allows you the, the freedom to sort of think in different expressive avenues doesn't it it definitely does. I think my experience in working in different fields, as you said, has really helped me and informed me. I love materials and I like seeing what they can do and how you can push them in different ways. So, I mean, one of my favorite places is hanging out in the hardware store. B&Q is... <laughs> one of my favorite places because tiles can be used in crazy ways not just for the floor or copper piping you know it's what you can do with copper piping you know it's it's amazing or mirrors or I am also going to do some possibly online exhibitions as well and it's just it's really I'm finding my way because I in a sense that I have done a lot of things I am still at the beginning I feel in a sense of my glass career. It has not been going that long, but I'm really excited about it. And my teaching, that is something, and possibly obviously looking at the pandemic, um, ending in that to, to kind of also set up uh, some classes for glass painting. But that is, again, down the line and in the future, but uh, I'm hoping to get there. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure you will. With your with your uh, ingenuity and energy and curiosity, I have no doubt you're going to get there. 
Janine, it's been absolutely fantastic spending time talking with you and reconnecting. We, we uh, have stayed friends since we first met and I'm really interested to see your career and to, to see what you're going to produce next. So I'm going to li leave links in the comments below to your work and how people can see your work. Uh, and Janine, thank you so much for spending time with me today. Thanks, Terry. Thank you.